Now out of Europe. It's been a bad week for them. It's Lapid Vienna to a storm of booze who goes through. And the great irony is that Weinhofer, whose apparent injury caused the match to be replayed after that Celtic won at uh, Celtic Park. Tonight, cut their supply line by playing David Robin out of the match. Celtic just could not find the way and go out of Europe. There's an Austrian player down on the ground, seemed to be tripped as he came in. And a spectator being taken away by the police. And surely supporters will not add insult to the injury which is clear on every Celtic player's face. Peter Packholt into the dressing room. The man who scored the goal, which won the tie here and made it 4-1 on aggregate, is in the end fell by a spectator. Well, defiant support from Celtic spectators, but sadly the actions of the one who ran onto the field and attacked the goalkeeper, the supporter he can be called, and the other who attacked the scorer of the only goal tonight, Peter Packholt, could well result in Celtic out of Europe this season, not being allowed to enter Europe in the seasons ahead. Well, there are bound to be recriminations there. Barry Davis asked the Celtic manager, David Hay, whether he thought those incidents would lead to his team being banned from Europe. Competition. Well, I hope not. The first one, the idiot who attacked the goalkeeper, apparently we found out he came from Coventry. You know, he could be a Celtic supporter, he may not. There was another incident at the end whereby Someone who was actually, I think, held with the police had a kick at one of the Rapid players. Uh, what I would say is we had about 50,000 Celtic supporters here tonight, and because there may be two or three idiots, the good name of the club is tarnished, and hopefully there'll be no repercussions in Europe. What do a club do to stop that sort of incident happening? Well, we tried everything possible. We stayed in the, the press, like, you know, you to be in your best of behaviour, the name of the club is at, at stake. It's basically in this day and age it's difficult to stop people like that. I think the Gullifs is a football match, so we still do something silly, these people. Do you think that uh, you should be made responsible? Celtic Football Club? I don't think so. If we were responsible, I'd stand up and be counted and say yes, and we take full responsibility. But I feel that's we did everything possible. Probably two guys who might have a drink in them. And at the end of the day, what do you do? Do you play football in front of no crowds then? Yes, it's a, it's a curious thing, but in fact, uh, the atmosphere was such that you might have done better to play it behind closed doors because it became so frenetic, didn't it? Yeah, that's possibly true, but that's all very well saying that in hindsight. You know, we made our points, we felt it was unjust we had to play the game. We accepted UEFA's decision and let ourselves down by not playing too well tonight. Now you've got to concentrate on closing a five-point lead. That's true, and it starts. We've got to lift ourselves up on Saturday at Easter Road. David. Well, the UEFA observer at that match refused to comment on the attack on the Rapid goalkeeper and on another Vienna player knocked to the ground after the final whistle, saying, my report is confidential. But Manchester Police have tonight confirmed that charges are to be preferred against three fans who were arrested. Although the Celtic players behaved blamelessly, at least six bottles were thrown and the Scottish FA have said tonight they very much fear that UEFA will take a serious view of the behaviour of two or three lunatics. Well, the draw for the quarter-finals of the European competitions will be made on Friday with Liverpool in the European Cup, Everton in the Cup Winners' Cup and Manchester United and Tottenham coming through tonight's UEFA Cup ties. These are the other teams who'll join them. Dynamo Minsk of the Soviet Union who beat Vidzev Lodz 2-1 on aggregate and FC Cologne of West Germany who also won 2-1 on aggregate against Spartak Moscow. And the closest result tonight was that of Inter Milan of Italy, who beat Hamburg 1-0 with a Liam Brady penalty. The aggregate score was 2-2, and Milan go through on the away goal rule. Vidotin of Hungary are through, and Real Madrid of Spain recovered from a 3-0 first leg defeat at the hands of Anderlecht to win tonight 6-1 and win their tie 6-4 on aggregate. And the final team in the draw on Friday, Zel Zeznica of Yugoslavia. And that brings us to the end of Sports Night for 1984. We shall be back in January. But I hope you'll still make a date with us for next Wednesday. We have a boxing special from Belfast, Britain's top 
World title prospect Barry McGuigan defends his British and European featherweight titles against Clyde Ruin of Slough. Once again, the little Irishman's world ranking is on the line. That fight is on BBC One next Wednesday at 9.25. Hope you'll join me then. From all of us, good night. At 11.15 tomorrow night, BBC One's cameras will be at the Grand Hall Olympia for the first of five days' coverage of the International Show Jumping Championships. In Tenko on Sunday, the prospect of repatriation meets with mixed reactions. Now don't forget, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, in the whole wide world, we're all meeting at Rattles on the 20th of October 1950. Five years from the day you leave here, right? I suddenly realize that in just a few days' time, you'll be on your way. And I need to talk to you. The Last Tenko, on Sunday at 8.50 on BBC One. Newsnight on BBC Two in a couple of minutes will be examining the case for and against British sovereignty over the Falklands, with MPs speaking on both sides of the issue in view of today's Select Committee report. Here on BBC One, Christopher Lee and Anton Diffring star in our late film, A Grisly Tale, in which blackmail and murder help preserve the eternal youth of the man who could cheat death.